Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm 26 years old. I'm from San Diego, California, and tonight I'll be performing stand-up comedy. An elephant and a fish. Swimming trunks. So far this year, I've performed in a coffee shop. I've performed in a cafeteria. I've performed at a laundromat. I've performed at a pizza parlor. I've performed at a girl's Sweet 16 party at her mother's Korean restaurant. Things aren't going well. What do you, what do you guys, what are you guys in for? Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hey. How are you doing hey. today? I'm fine, thank you. How about yourself? Very good, thank you for asking. Oh, good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, my name is Taylor. I'm a professional stand-up comedian, if you don't count the fact that my mom still pays my cell phone bills. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. What made you um, become a comedian? What was your school life like? Well, uh, I got picked on a lot. I can't believe it either. Um, <laughs> and uh, I found that making people laugh, I mean, they want to take a break from hurting me. Yeah, I wouldn't be here with you guys if it wasn't for that. So God bless everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, Taylor, you're already making his laugh, so okay. carry on. Hey, what would you do if you won the million dollars? What would you do? <laughs> uh, well, I'd buy everyone in the audience ice cream. <laughs> Okay, Taylor, do your thing. You know, they say the hardest thing in the world is raising a child. I think the second hardest thing is putting a comforter inside a duvet. <laughs> and uh, if you didn't laugh at that joke, it's probably because you don't know what a duvet is. <laughs> um, I'm not a parent, but I do have parental instincts sometimes. Like, remember when you were little and your mom was driving and she had to stop the car very abruptly so she'd put her arm out to protect you and keep you safe, you know? I did that today with Chinese food. <laughs> Apparently, I was driving in England. That happened. It's like you, eh? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, my, uh, my grandma's really old. Um, I guess that's how grandmas work. You know, she's like um, 95. Whenever I talk to her, she tells me how all her friends are dying and she remains in perfect health. I figured it out, you guys. She's the murderer. <laughs> and uh, if you didn't laugh at that joke, uh, it's probably because you don't know what a duvet is. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. You know what? You're very funny, brother. Oh, very, very funny. Thank you I was so much. laughing a lot. Thank you. I liked it. You've, you've got, you're kind of a little bit awkward, and I like that too. Oh, and you're a bit kind of strange to look at, and I really like that too. I do, in a nice way, in a nice way. I like looking at you too. Thanks. <laughs> Howie, what did you think? I think you are fabulous. I really do. I think that, you know, I've never seen you before. How long have you been doing this? Almost 10 years. Almost 10 years. It's amazing that you haven't, and I love that you haven't been seen and that we can discover you right here on AGT. What's amazing, <laughs> even the way you sound, I like your voice. I mean, when you become <laughs> famous, people are gonna be doing impressions of you. You are very funny. I think you got great stage presence. Welcome to America's Got Talent. There you go. All right. Hi, what did you think? I also thought that you were very funny in a very shy and dorky kind of a way. This, this is just a character. I have, I have sex all the time. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Thank you. Howard, what did you think? You know, to me, the sign of a true wit, uh, not only for your, your material that you had prepared, but your repartee with Mel and just now Heidi, uh, you're quick, you know? Very. And you, you've got that kind of mind that can come out here, 90 seconds, win everyone over. I think you're going to do very well. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know what's great about this? Finally, you're watching something wholesome, good, something the whole family can watch together. And who's about family entertainment more than America's favorite judge? So here's what I suggest you do. 
See right down below? Click, subscribe, watch, learn more about America's Got Talent. And leave me alone. My first audition went really well. You were very funny in a very shy and dorky kind of a way. This, this is just a character. I have, I have sex all the time. <laughs> you're quick, you know. I think you're going to do very well. Thank you so much. Thank you. I have two hours of jokes to pick from, which is a great problem to have, but it's a problem because I have to figure out which 90 seconds can appeal to an audience of four judges. Oh, look, he's, he's a pacer. Indiana pacer. He sees paces around with me. I think Taylor's the one I gotta watch out for. Yeah, <laughs> He's the one to watch. You ready for this? Nick, this is horrible. Why are they doing this to me? I don't know, <laughs> man. My dream was to get up to this part on the show, and now it's my worst nightmare. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> it, hey. it, it, whatever it is, <laughs> it's here. <laughs> Go get them. Okay. See you later. <laughs> Bye. I'm either going to have my dreams come true because of this show, or I'm going to have a day job. Hey, guys, I missed you. Hi. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Sorry. This is a perfect environment for comedy. I'm very confident. <laughs> you know, we were just talking about that, saying how hard it is for the comedians in this kind of setting, because you have four people. Sure. That's it. No pressure about laughter, but this is the only time I feel alive. OK. OK. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, <laughs> All right, here's my routine, everybody. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Uh, <laughs> I think he's really connected with that. He's really, he's having fun and he doesn't care. <laughs> hey. <laughs> is my, how much time do I have left? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, folks. <laughs> I returned a box of cereal to the grocery store, and my roommate was like, oh, you're so cheap, is it because you're Jewish? And I was like, no, I'm not cheap because I'm Jewish, I'm cheap because I'm poor. Not everything I do is just because I'm Jewish. For example, I'm circumcised because I'm classy. <laughs> I'm like happy for him, but sad for myself. If I ever have kids, I'm gonna make sure that they grow up being friends with every color of the rainbow. Uh, that means no black people. <laughs> or white people. You're cool. You can come over. Hey, thank you very much, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you so much. He was funny. Yep, he was great. You know what's great about this? Finally, you're watching something wholesome, good, something the whole family can watch together. And who's about family entertainment more than America's favorite judge? So here's what I suggest you do. See right down below? Click. Subscribe. Watch, learn more about America's Got Talent, and leave me alone. A week before my America's Got Talent audition, uh, I invited a girl to come to one of my shows, and she said to me, you do this every night of your life? That's so sad. I don't want to have to hear that ever again. I'm kind of freaking out, because I've been watching this show, and I see how all these amazing performers spend hours a day rehearsing for this moment. I spend most of my days sitting in my underwear playing video games. Sometimes I'm not even in my underwear. I've been preparing a lot. A lot of yoga. Uh, a lot of napping. Napping's important. I don't believe any of this. I feel like this is all just a big prank by Howie Mandel. It's, he's just gonna be like, this is all a trick, no one likes you. Taxi. In my career and in my life, I've never been the guy who got picked. Before this show, I would walk on stage and people would be like, who's this weird guy, you know? But now, I walk on stage, people are like, hey look, it's that weird guy. And it's what I've been dreaming of for 10 years. If I don't make it through to the semifinals, I'll probably cry a lot. America, you don't want me to cry, do you? Hey everybody, it's great to be here in New York City. <laughs> here are a few things I learned through my experiences in beautiful New York City. First, I learned that pretty girls on subways don't enjoy talking to really talented up and coming comedians. I learned that. I learned that when you're done using a prophylactic, you're supposed to tie it in a knot and throw it on the sidewalk. And my favorite thing I learned in New York City, just because you're homeless doesn't mean you can't have cats. A homeless man came up to me and said, give me your money or I'm gonna go jihad on your ass. 
Now, I know I should have been concerned, but instead I was impressed. This homeless man's been keeping up with the news. <laughs> Someone's been reading his blanket. <laughs> Get it? Well, let me make sure I covered everything here. Let me see. Uh, came out to Spice Girls. That was pretty big. What a coincidence that you were here, too. Oh, what are the odds? Um, let's see. Uh, homeless people, cats, classic. Um, the good thing about dating a blind girl is you don't have to worry that she might be seeing other people. That's fine, right? That's fine, right? Right? Because they can't, you know. Um, the only girls who look at me like I'm a piece of meat are vegetarians. Um, <laughs> uh, unattractive older women should be called Freddy Cougars. <laughs> and a uh, standing ovation from everyone in the audience, including the judges. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> thanks a lot. Hey, thanks. You know what's great about this? Finally, you're watching something wholesome, good, something the whole family can watch together. And who's about family entertainment more than America's favorite judge? So here's what I suggest you do. See right down below? Click, subscribe, watch, learn more about America's Got Talent. And leave me alone. You won. We're going to the semifinals. I was freaking out. Like, it was the scariest, most horrible, wonderful moment ever. The wonderful part was after they said my name. Taylor Williamson! I can't believe people voted for me. That's the craziest thing is uh, people like me. It's just such a special, overwhelming thing. It's just a dream come true, and uh, I want it to happen again. What's up, guys? I hope you win. Hey, oh, thank you I so much. I have fans now that don't hang from ceilings, which is pretty exciting. You're like my favorite person. Oh, thanks, Jessica. You're my favorite person. I am becoming a heartthrob. I'm officially a heartthrob. I'm a teen heartthrob. Bye. I love you so much. <laughs> I get it, you know? <laughs> that's funny. His material is great, but that's subjective. I'm looking for an act that I can go and see with my family. I'm just being honest. I didn't think it was very funny. Patty Klum just hated me. I, I can't get that out of my head. So that's why I catered my next performance to the children of America. Do you think my comedy is appropriate for children? I'm really freaking out because everybody on the show is so good. Why don't you put me on the good show? Hey everybody, it's great to be back here in New York City. <laughs> Hi Heidi. I missed you too. <laughs> Before I start, I just want to let you know that I really, truly do respect your opinion on stand-up comedy. And I spent the last two weeks writing a bunch of jokes that are extremely child-appropriate, and I dedicate my set tonight to you. Uh, uh. <laughs> hey, you guys, Heidi and me went to the zoo today. Anyone here ever go to the zoo before? <laughs> I went to the zoo. Uh, I saw this camel. It had really tiny humps. Hope she has a nice personality. Right? <laughs> uh -huh. No? Yeah? yeah. <laughs> Anyone here ever go to elementary school? <laughs> Me too, we have so much in common. You know how they call them number two pencils? That's disgusting. <laughs> I like dogs. How come it's okay when you see a dog? You can go, aw, that dog's so cute. Aw, that dog's adorable. But then it's creepy when I go, I think that dog is attractive. You guys are awkward. <laughs> My friend Margie just got a Labradoodle, 
If you're not familiar with this, cutest dog I've ever seen in my entire life. It's a mix between a lab and a doodle. <laughs> I can't even make this up. The dog's father's a four pound black poodle. Dog's mother, 60 pound white Labrador retriever. That's a huge size difference. But I guess it proves the stereotype that black poodles love fat white bitches, right? <laughs> Hey, thank you very much, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Heidi Klum. I love you so much. <laughs> hey, YouTube. Thanks for watching this year's America's Got Talent. If you want to see more, all you got to do is click below, and, and you could subscribe or see more. What will they think of next? This whole World Wide Web is fascinating. It is. Everybody, it's great to be back here in New York City again. <laughs> Anyone here ever have any parents before? <laughs> Me too, we're like twins. My parents were always very politically correct. One of the few games my brother and I were allowed to play growing up was Cowboys and Native Americans. <laughs> we weren't allowed to use guns and bows and arrows. Instead, we had to use apology letters and discount vouchers to casinos. <laughs> When I was 16, I was driving my mom's car and she was yelling at me and I crashed her car into the garage and she was like, Taylor, you have to pay for the repairs because you're responsible for the damage. Yeah, so now when I get the bills from my therapist, I send those to her. <laughs> you ever hear this from your family? Spend time with your grandparents, find out where you came from, they're not gonna be around forever. You ever hear this nonsense? Well, I did this, then I found out things I did not want to know. I found out my grandma's parents were first cousins. Yay! Family time. I wonder what their wedding was like. Just everyone sitting on one side of the aisle. <laughs> so, uh, where'd you guys meet? Grandma's house. That's weird. My grandma's racist. Thank you. And she told me, Taylor, if you ever marry a black person, I won't come to your wedding. I said, Grandma, by the time I get married, I don't think you'll be alive anymore. <laughs> My grandma doesn't like that joke. She says it's too dark for her. That's all for me. Thank you guys very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Smart Thank you so and much. funny stuff. Thank you. Awesome job again. All right. Our toughest comedy critic, Heidi Klum. How did he do? You know, Taylor, I thought it was really funny when you said that you send your therapy bills to your mom. I'm going to be sending you mine. <laughs> I always, I don't know what it is with comedians. I always feel so verklempt and kind of like, oh my God, is it going to be funny? Am I going to be laughing? I always feel a little, you know, but you're growing on me. <laughs> you are. You are. Uh, I'm, that was a compliment, by the way. Mm -hmm. Are you saying like I'm like a fungus on you? Is that like... <laughs> like a yummy kind of mushroom. I, I would love to be a fungus on you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'll be sending you the bill if I go. Judge Stern. I hope people vote for you. You know, I'm excited that you're here. You know, when I envision sitting on my couch again watching the finals next week, I, I envision you being a part of the six. It's important to have a comedian, a comedian who's experienced, in control. You mixed it up this time, too. I felt your material got a little more edgy. I liked it. You showed a new dimension of yourself. I think you did a great job tonight. Thank and you. I, and I love you. I love you. Thank I love you. Mel B. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I did uh, go find back to it. Howard. Go back to Howard. <laughs> over here. Bring it over here. Right here. And you know, the great thing about you is you're positive, and we love your character. <laughs> Howie, what did you think? You know, to be honest. Wait, I haven't 
<laughs> oh, I think you already said enough, Mel. I don't want to say. You're a big loudmouth. I want to say something to Mel. I want to say, and this is to people. We see people who sing great on this show. We see people who dance great. But that's training. What they have to realize as a comedian, and I say this because I'm a comedian, a comedian writes his own material, creates his own character, shows up here, and has crafted this all by himself. That is wow. <laughs> And we've run out of time. So much more goes into this than many of the other acts. We ran out of time. Mel, we would have loved to have heard from you. How he yes. knows. He yes. definitely knows. You're Mel brilliant. We'll give you an opportunity to say something. No. Sing one of those Spice Girls songs. <laughs> no, we don't want to. Come on, let's hear it. Sing that song, you two. Nothing naked. Vote for him. Full of comedy. Wow. I mean, you left some of our judges speechless. Uh, <laughs> Others loved you tremendously. What do you want to say? I just want to say uh, thank you to all four judges for your overwhelmingly positive words of encouragement. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just want to say to all the kids watching at home, I just want to let everyone know watching at home that I think homework sucks and I love NASCAR and One Direction. <laughs> I think you just checked some good boxes right there. Great <laughs> job. Producers came up to me and said, guess what? You get to perform the same jokes that you told before again. And I was like, no, that's not how comedy works. You can't do that. I'm gonna get as many laughs right now with an empty audience as I will with the full crowd of people who've heard the joke before. Can I sing a country song? I'll sing a country song. I'll steal one of Kenichi's dances. <laughs> If Heidi Klum didn't like them the first time, I feel like your material is not family material. Maybe Heidi Klum will understand them now. Why do lobsters hate to share? Because they're shellfish. Watch. Hey, why do lobsters hate to share? Because they're shellfish. It's not funny anymore. Why are you guys doing this to me? This is crazy. Hey everybody, it's great to be here in the finals of America's Got Talent. Yeah. Actually, no it's not. The producers told me I have to come out here and tell the same jokes I've already told before. Comedy doesn't work like that. You can't tell the same jokes twice. They're not gonna work. The producers promised me, Taylor, don't worry about it. We're gonna make your jokes bigger and better. Let's just do this. I have a joke about a camel. Bring out the camel, let's do this. What is that? That's not a camel. That's like a kangaroo or something. This is a horse. Oh God, I'll just do this. Hey, you guys, I uh, went to the zoo. Uh, I saw this camel. It had really tiny humps. Hope she has a nice personality, right? <laughs> I hate you. <sighs> what are you going to do? <sighs> That's not even a camel. It's a person in a seahorse costume. Oh God, Heidi, you say you like me more when I banter with you than when I tell you jokes. I guess I'll banter with you. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Taylor. Hi, I hope you Hi. liked my animal jokes. I thought you would, because you know you were married to a seal. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> what am I doing? What is happening? Oh, good Lord, you guys. Please, producers, please help me out here. Everyone else is, they're getting lasers. They're getting, they're getting an orchestra. Give me something. Forte had a choir. Just give me the choir. They're already here. Can I have a choir, please? Thank you. My friend Margie got a Labradoodle. The dog's father's a four pound black poodle. Dog's mother's 60 pound white Labrador retriever. That's a huge size difference. But I guess it proves the stereotype that. that black poodles love that white Mom stopped calling me when the top six most talented people in America. 
Please pay my phone bill again, thank you. I had no confidence going into the first audition. I was just like, I'm gonna go out here and do this, and then they're gonna say we don't like you, then I'm gonna go home and cry. It's my normal routine, you know? Take the wings, I have the biggest people in comedy telling me that you are doing what you should be doing with your life, and you're good at it. I've been working really hard a long time, and it's nice to have this happen, you know? I'm not crying. This doesn't count as crying, does it? This long 10-year struggle and this career has not been a waste of time. What more could I ask for besides a million dollars? <laughs> Hey everybody, it's great to be here in the finals of America's Got Talent again. Hey, hey. Hi, Heidi. Uh, it's great. <laughs> You're sharing this picture with everybody. <laughs> I just, I forgot to tell you before, I had a really great time with you last night. And, uh, I did too, but you're sharing this picture with everybody? Uh, well, I forgot to tell you also that you left your leader hose into my place again. Um, <laughs> she always does that, it's so weird. She wants to see me again, that's what girls do. Um, <laughs> Look at this photo. Hey fellas. If you ever want to test to see if your girlfriend really truly loves you, here's what you do, okay? You ask her to take you to the airport at five in the morning. And then when you get there, you say, I don't really have a flight. <laughs> <laughs>